Just a quick reminder before we get into the lesson to download the hands-on lab exercises that accompany this complete CCNA course. I'll include the link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and hit the notifications bell so you don't miss any of the lessons in the course. Okay, let's get into it. In this lecture, you'll learn how to configure the OSPF router ID, passive interfaces, and how to do default route injection with a lab demo. So in our lab topology, we've got the usual five routers, R1 to R5, and R4 is connected out to the internet on interface FAST 3 slash 0 with IP address 203.0.113.1. So let's go on to R4 and check what the router ID is right now. So I'll do a show IP protocols and I can see that the router ID is 203.0.113.1. If I do a show IP interface brief, I see that I don't have any loopback interfaces configured on here. So it's taken the highest IP address which is 203.0.113.1. So it's bad practice to have that. It's better to use a loopback or to manually set the router ID. So let's configure a loopback first. So I'll go config T, then interface and loopback zero, and I'll give it IP address 1.1.1.1, 255.255.255.255.255. .1 .1 .1 .1, as the subnet mask. It's a loopback, so I don't need to do a no shutdown. It's no shutdown automatically. If I now do a show IP protocols, you're going to see that the router ID has not changed. What happens is when the router boots up or when OSPF starts, it checks to see what is the highest loopback or physical IP address if the router ID has not been manually set. But if you change this later by adding a loopback, it's not going to automatically update it. So we can force this to update by restarting OSPF. So let's do a show run section OSPF just so I can be able to copy and paste this back in. And I'm going to copy my current OSPF configuration. And then at global config, I'll do a no router OSPF1 and then paste the config back in. So that will stop and start OSPF on here. Again, obviously don't do this in a production environment because you would lose routes. I'll then end, and if I do a show IP protocol now, I'll see that the router ID has updated to the loopback. Other way that you can manipulate the router ID is by setting it manually. So to do that, in global configuration, I go router OSPF1, and then router-id, and let's give it 2.2.2.2. And with OSPF, I'm going to have to restart OSPF again so I can reload or I can do a clear IP OSPF process command. That's similar to removing and then re-enabling the config. So you saw with EIGRP, when I set the router ID, it took effect immediately. But with OSPF, if I now do a show IP protocols, it's still using the loopback address. So I can restart OSPF. I'll just copy and paste this in. So I'll clear IP OSPF process at the enable prompt. It will ask me to verify because again, this would be disruptive and I'll say yes. And now if I do a show IP protocols, I'll see that it has taken that new router ID. You can see it was disruptive because you see that the adjacency went down and then came back up again. Okay, so that's how you configure the router ID. Next thing, if we have a look back at the topology diagram, you see on interface fast 3 slash 0, we've got the 203.0.113.0 slash 24 network. And that is not currently being advertised in OSPF. I want to advertise that to my routers on the inside. So routers R1, R2, R3, and R5, but I don't want to give out internal routing information 
to the internet service provider router. So I'm going to make interface fast ethernet 3 slash 0 a passive interface. So let's go back on to R4 again. And if I do a show run for section OSPF, you'll see that I've just got a network command right now for the 10 networks. So that is not being advertised in OSPF yet. And if I go on to another router and do a show IP route, you'll see there's no route there for the 203 network. So I want R1 and my other internal routers to learn this. So on R4, I'll go to global configuration, router OSPF1, and I will say, let me just do a, a do show IP interface brief, just to double check what the interface was. Okay, it was on interface fast three slash zero. So still in the OSPF config, I'll say passive interface, fast ethernet three slash zero. And then I need to put in the network command so that it will be advertised internally. So it's network 203.0.113.0, the wildcard mask of 0.0.0.255 and area zero. And if I now go back into another router and do a show IP route, if it's converged yet, yes, there it is. I can see that that is now being learned by my other internal routers, but it's not going to send any information out. Okay, last thing is I want to do static default route injection into OSPF. So it's back on R4 again, it's connected out to that service provider. So on R4, I will do an IP route, so a static route for everything that doesn't have a more specific route so 0.0.0.0 and the next hop address is 203.0.113.2 and i don't want to have to configure a static route on all my other routers i want them to learn it dynamically so under router ospf1 i'll say default dash information originate and that will inject that default static route into ospf so if I now go on to R1 and do a show IP route here, you'll see the routing table is updated. It's got that default route, which was learned from OSPF. Okay, so that was our OSPF advanced topics in the lab. See you in the next lecture. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to get the complete course ad free right now, then you can enroll in my CCNA Gold Bootcamp by clicking the link above my head or in the description. It also includes full study notes, quizzes, and 150 pages of additional troubleshooting labs you can't find anywhere else.